Hello everyone. I hope everyone is doing good and all is well. Today we're going to chat about the Tulsa, Oklahoma massacre or race riot as some reports like to call it. We're going to discuss the Tulsa massacre of 1921 that caused the destruction of Black Wall Street. This massacre claimed the lives of approximately 300 people, mainly African Americans. More than 800 people were injured, 35 city blocks were destroyed, and more than 10,000 people were left homeless. It's a very sad story, but it's a story that must be told and never forgotten. So with that being said, let's chat. Before we discuss the Tulsa Massacre and Black Wall Street, we must chat about O.W. Gurley because he played a significant role in the creation of Black Wall Street. Ottawa Gurley, better known as O.W. Gurley, was born on December the 25th, 1868. He was born on Christmas Day. Now his parents, they were freed slaves and he was born in Huntsville, Alabama. Gurley grew up in Pine Bluff. He was self-educated and he married his childhood sweetheart, Emma. Although Gurley was self-educated, he spent a brief period of his life as a teacher. Gurley also worked with the United States Postal Services. Gurley participated in the Oklahoma land run of 1889, and Gurley also participated in the Cherokee Outlet land rush in Indian Territory in 1893 and state claims in Perry Noble County. Gurley ran for treasurer of Noble County, but he did not win. He later became the principal of the town's school and operated a general store in the community. In 1906, Gurley, a wealthy African-American landowner, along with his wife Emma, moved to Tulsa and purchased 40 acres of land that was to be sold to colored African-American people only. Gurley used the land to provide opportunities to African Americans migrating from the harsh oppression of Mississippi. And ladies and gentlemen, this is how Black Wall Street was born. Black Wall Street was built on what was former Indian Territory in the Greenwood District in Tulsa, Oklahoma. The first businesses within Black Wall Street were established by Gurley. Gurley's first business was a rooming house located on a dusty trail near the railroad tracks. The road was named Greenwood Avenue after the city in Mississippi. This area became very popular amongst the African American migrants fleeing from oppression in Mississippi. The African American population began to grow. So Gurley subdivided his plot into residential and commercial lots, and Gurley eventually opened a grocery store. Not long after, Gurley built three two-story buildings, five residences. He bought an 80-acre farm in Roger County, and he also founded Vernon AME Church. By 1913, more businesses arose within Black Wall Street. Those businesses included the law and doctor's offices of Buck Colbert Franklin and A.C. Jackson, Booker T. Washington and Dunbar Schools, Mount Zion Baptist Churches, Ricketts Restaurant, the Williams Dreamland Theater, Man's Grocery Store, Stafford Hotels, Haberdasheries, Drug Stores, Cafes, Barbershops, Beauty Salons, Banks, Clotheries, and Contemporary Homes. Luxuries like indoor plumbing existed within Black Wall Street in 1913. And all I can say is, wow, and I love my people. Now, according to Walter F. White of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People or the NAACP, after visiting the town of Tulsa after the massacre or riot, 
The town had grown from a population of 18,182 in 1910 to somewhere between 90 to 100,000 residents by 1920. And he also stated that the black economic prosperity contributed to the destruction of the Greenwood District or Black Wall Street. White claimed that the sudden wealth of the black townspeople rivaled the 49ers in California. Now, for those who don't know, the 49ers in California that I'm referring to or that what White was referring to are the people who left their lives, property, and homes to travel to California between 1848 and 1849 in search of gold. The 49ers history reports that mass amounts of gold was mined by 1857, and it is stated that more than $252 million worth of gold had been mined by 1857. So to break that down even further, the black people within Black Wall Street were so wealthy, they could give the gold miners a run for their money. Or in other words, they had as much money or possibly even more money than the gold miners. The black people were so wealthy, the state of Oklahoma had only two airports, yet six of the black families within Black Wall Street owned their own planes. And not only were the black people of Black Wall Street wealthy, they also were very smart and responsible with their wealth, and they supported each other. Many reports state that a dollar circulated 36 to 100 times and remained in Greenwood almost a year before leaving. Amazing and impressive. And let's not forget, this is all in the 1900s. But back to the story. Now, white claimed that when blacks experienced wealth, lower class whites resented their wealth. And this is what is said to have led to the Tulsa massacre and destruction of Black Wall Street. The alleged incident that was said to have occurred on the morning of May 30th, 1921, was just the match that lit the fire. On May the 30th, 1921, a young black man named Dick Rowland was riding the elevator in the Drexel building at 3rd and Main with a woman, with a white woman, I'm sorry, named Sarah Page. Page was the elevator operator at that time. Now, rumor has it, Paige was heard screaming as Roland fled the elevator. And rumors spread, spread quickly of an alleged sexual assault. Now, the story of what happened on May the 30th, 1921 varies from one person to the other. And I believe no one really knows what happened that day. But that's just my opinion. But moving on along. Dick Rowland was arrested the following day, May the 31st, 1921, for the alleged sexual assault. Rowland was held at the county courthouse. And while he was held at the county courthouse, a white mob gathered with the intent to lynch Rowland outside and around the courthouse. And when the citizen of Greenwood got news of the planned lynching, a group of armed men went to the jail to protect Rowland. When they got there, the racial tensions flared as the armed white and black men gathered outside the courthouse. Now, old W. Gurley, we all remember him. He's a very important part of Black Wall Street. But at this time, old W. Gurley was a sheriff's deputy who was responsible for protecting the black community. He tried to make peace as those racial tensions flared, but his efforts were pointless. A scuffle broke out and the massacre began. The vastly outnumbered African Americans retreated to the Greenwood District after the scuffle broke out and the massacre began and the white mobs followed. Violence, violence exploded as the night unfolded. In the early morning hours of June the 1st, 1921, Greenwood was looted and burned down by the white mobs. Eyewitnesses claim that the area was bombed with kerosene and nitroglycerin, causing the inferno to rage more aggressively. 
Some eyewitnesses stated that kerosene bombs were dropped from airplanes to demolish buildings. According to sociologist Chris M. Messer, the police force also contributed to the riot. And due to their ineffective leadership, the police allowed mobs to gather at the courthouse for hours before seeking additional assistance. They also actively participated in the massacre by deputizing whites without discretion and they armed them with guns to multiply the police force overnight. The police completely disregarded due process by arresting the blacks and interning or confining them as prisoners within detention camps. Meanwhile, not one white person was arrested during the massacre. By noon of June the 1st, 1921, Oklahoma Governor Robertson declaimed, I'm sorry, he declared martial law and sent in the Oklahoma National Guard. Thousands of black Tulsans were arrested and detained. By the time the smoke cleared, more than 300 people, mainly African Americans, had lost their lives. 800 people were injured. 35 city blocks were burned down and destroyed, and more than 10,000 people were left homeless. Black Wall Street had been burned down to the ground. Most of the bodies were never recovered, and it is presumed that this is because many of the dead black people were buried in mass graves. And I'll talk about that in a couple of my other videos, so you all please check them out. And as for the surviving black people, after being rounded up under martial law, the traumatized Greenwood residents were kept under surveillance by armed guards anywhere from hours to days. A white citizen or employer had to vouch for the black Tulsans in order for them to be released. And two days after the riot, the mayor established the Reconstruction Committee to redesign the Greenwood District for industrial purposes. He pretty much wasted no time. And the white men were offered almost, well, they offered almost any price for the property. So they basically bought the land for pennies on the dollar. And no one was ever punished or prosecuted for what is known as the biggest racial massacre in American history and the destruction of Black Wall Street. Well, that brings us to the end of today's chat. Please tell me what you think in the comments below. Please like the video, subscribe if you haven't already, support if you would like. The information to support will be in the description box below. No pressure. And until next time, peace, love, and blessings.